In this chapter, we're going to answer the question, what is climate action planning? We'll look at the difference between climate mitigation and climate adaptation. We'll go over the basic process of climate action planning, and we'll look at the areas of climate action planning or the types of actions uh, that can be taken. First, we're going to start with clarifying some terms and definitions. Uh, and this does often cause some confusion because these terms are used in different ways in different fields. If you take a look at this graphic and start in the, in the middle, it explains the basic process of climate change. So the things that we do in our communities that result in the combustion of fossil fuels, so say for example driving our car or using electricity that's being produced at a power plant, these kinds of activities are what produce greenhouse gas emissions. And in another uh, another one of the courses that we're offering, we'll talk more about those greenhouse gases. But these activities, the combustion of fossil fuel results in the emission of greenhouse gases. These accumulate in the atmosphere and further drive the greenhouse gas process globally that causes uh, global warming and climate change. Those changes to the climate, then the impacts of those are felt most acutely at the local level. So cities and communities are suffering the impacts then of these climate changes. So for example, if we think again about the emissions idea, this is, a, this is an emissions inventory from the city of San Mateo, California, and you can see that they've accounted for the kinds of activities in their community uh, that are resulting in emissions. In this particular community, you can see that on-road transportation is the most significant source of greenhouse gas emissions. That's from internal combustion engines. And you can also see that the residential and commercial built environments, primarily the use of electricity and the burning of natural gas, is also producing greenhouse gas emissions. There are a variety of other sources, solid waste, off-road equipment, uh, water and wastewater usage also. These are usually smaller proportions for most communities. And again, if we think about uh, the impact side, uh, this is just an example from the city of New Orleans showing parts of the city that are at greatest risk uh, to flooding and who's at most uh, risk to that kinds of flooding. So again, if we look at the inside of the diagram, we can see that process uh, playing out globally. If we look at the outside of the diagram, this is describing the kinds of actions that we would then take to respond to both aspects of this issue to deal with the emission of greenhouse gas emissions, which is causing the problem, we engage in what's called climate change mitigation. The objective here is for communities to take actions to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. If we look at the right side of the diagram, responding to the impacts of climate change that local communities will feel, we can see that this is called climate change adaptation. And the idea is to build more resilient communities that can deal with these potential impacts. So what is climate action planning? The simplest way to define it is to think of climate action planning in two ways. Uh, first, it's strategic planning aimed at reducing greenhouse gas emissions in the community. And by strategic planning, we simply mean that it's very specifically aimed uh, at addressing the issue of climate change. Of course, communities do lots of other kinds of planning, uh, city planning, uh, environmental planning, and these can be coordinated with those activities but here we're going to be specifically focusing on the issue of climate change. And again, one aspect of that is looking at how do we reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Communities all over the United States have been tackling this problem. And, and uh, here you can see an example of a number of different kinds of climate action plans. And I just want to point out that you can see that the, they're not always called climate action planning or climate action plans. You can see things like energy action plans or greenhouse gas emissions reduction plans or even communities who are trying to communicate a bolder and bigger idea, such as Nashville's uh, Together Making Nashville Green. The second aspect of climate action planning is that there are also strategic uh, plans aimed at increasing the community's resilience to the impacts of climate change. So far in the United States, most of the activity that cities and communities have been uh, tackling are on the reduction of a greenhouse gas emission side. And so there's a lot of experience and knowledge out there but increasingly, over the last five years, we've seen many communities shifting now and thinking more about the issue of climate adaptation or increasing the resilience of their communities. Now I'm going to describe the climate action planning process. In other words, how would you go about actually creating 
uh, plans or creating actions or policies that your community could move forward with. This is based on a well-known framework uh, from ICLEI local governments from local governments for sustainability uh, called the five milestones. And here we've sort of combined uh, together some of the elements of this. But basically we start at the top. The first thing that communities will need to do is go through and inventory their emissions. So how much greenhouse gas emissions are they creating and what are those primary sources? They'll also want to uh, conduct a, a risk or vulnerability assessment to identify parts of the community that might be impacted by climate change. So for example, if you're a coastal community, you might be concerned about sea level rise. The second step then is to establish goals and targets for the community. What do you want to achieve? Specifically, how much do you want to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions? And, and how much do you want to prepare for the oncoming impacts of climate change? The third step in the process then is to develop the climate actions and strategies that the community will ultimately take to address the issue. Uh, this is a, uh, a very uh, challenging uh, process uh, in that uh, it often has to be well integrated with all of the other things that a community is already doing uh, with regard to uh, planning and policy. The fourth step then is to take all of these great ideas that the community has uh, and implement them. Uh, implementation will raise issues of funding and finance, uh, who is responsible, uh, and it also creates great opportunities for partnerships in the community. And then finally, with any good planning process, uh, we'll want to monitor to see how implementation is going, whether we're achieving those goals and targets, uh, and then report and celebrate uh, that progress. There are a variety of areas of action that a community might take. Uh, I've taken this example from the city of Chicago. Uh, they identified sort of five big areas of action that they were interested in addressing. Uh, and this is exemplary of the areas that most communities are tackling in terms of climate change. Uh, one is energy efficiency, particularly energy efficiency um, in buildings. A second area is identifying and developing clean and renewable sources of energy. Um, so this is going to be things like uh, enhancing solar power and wind power opportunities in the community. A third area is improved uh, transportation. And I would add to this the transportation and land use linkage. Uh, in other words, identifying how we can best plan and incorporate our land use and transportation decisions in a way that reduces the need uh, to use a vehicle to get around. Uh, a fourth area that Chicago identified is reducing waste and uh, in industrial pollution. We mentioned before the idea of co-benefits. This obviously has important co-benefits for Chicago uh, in terms of just general environmental quality and public health, uh, but also by doing this, particularly reducing waste, they can reduce greenhouse gas emissions as well. Uh, and then Chicago also identified uh, climate adaptation as a fifth important area for taking um, action. Uh, so they were a little bit ahead of the game in terms of thinking about adaptation and building a resilient community. In the next chapter, we'll look at the basic tools for climate action planning.